Like a circle in a spiral Like a wheel within a wheel Never ending or beginning Like the circles that you find In the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 189. I'm Will Cooper, uh, manning the controls from Studio C in North Carolina. I'm joined by my special guest host tonight, Mr. Tom Pearson of Commonwealth Cita Spills from the Louisville area, right? That's right, Louisville, Kentucky, here in the heart of the Commonwealth. Exactly. Sort of. Yeah, in the heart of the Commonwealth. This is our, so this is our debonair ideal segment, Tom, and what we do with this segment is um, it's our cigar lifestyle piece where we really try to look at um, cigars and we kind of get a little bit away from the technical aspects of the cigars and, and we kind of connect them more with um, the everyday types of things in really, um, so to speak. Well, and, well I'll tell you, I, and not to interrupt, but after seeing the debonair spot there, that's hot. I want to get a cigar. I want to get a debonair cigar, walk around some hotels and meet meet women like that. That's hot. I, I tell you, Phil Zengi did a it, bang up job with that commercial. It's a great, it's a great spot. Yeah. Never happened to me and my wife wouldn't allow it, but you know, no, dare exactly. to dream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We live it. We live it every week with that. Um, uh, I have to get you a Stogie Geek Smoke Naked t-shirt. You remember to get you a size. I, I got to get you one. Not a problem. I will graciously accept it. I didn't give you one last summer, did I? No, no, no. Oh, well, okay. uh, I don't think so I now you say that, you put me in a spot. You may have, and I feel like a complete... I'll give you another one. I'll give you, I'll give you another one. Don't feel bad. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> you know, so you mentioned... I just mentioned last summer, and we're going to talk about summertime smokes. And Paul and I had this segment planned out beforehand, but... It was actually really good that you're here because, see, Tom, for the last few years, at least the last three or four years, there's every, every summer you and I have gotten together in the city of Chattanooga mm-hmm. at Chattanooga Tweet Up. And one of the, my most favorite things to do is get up early in the morning, right? Go over to Burns Tobacconist about yep. like 8 in the morning, and Tom's running a Bloody Mary bar over there. Yes. And having a morning smoke um, out there, which, in my opinion, I just love that every year to do that. Oh, yeah. it's. I mean, I don't know if there's a lot of therapeutic value to a, a, a big Bloody Mary and whatever cigar you might like. But, man, it does. it's a great way to kick off the day and wake you up. And, and the folks at Burns are great. Um, you know, I'm being the guy, you know, I make a little cedar spill. I'm a cigar accessory guy. I can't give out cigars to everybody. Um, but when they threw out the idea, you know, hey, why don't you just sponsor one of the bars? And they had one in the morning. They were thinking... I think the first time we did it was Bloody Marys. This past year was Bloody Marys and Mimosas, That's which right. I thought was a, a nice way to change it up because not everybody likes tomato juice. Um, but I, I totally agree. I like a nice, rich, peppery, maybe even a little hot Bloody Mary. And then maybe, uh, I don't know, probably probably a nice Roma Craft, something big and bold. You know, really, because it, it kickstarts your, your morning. I mean, that, mu- that much big flavor. It's it's just it kickstarts your day. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you know when we're usually that Chattanooga event is the first weekend in August, right? Yeah, I think so. And so Chattanooga, for folks geography wise, it's located on the southeast corner of of Tennessee, sits right mm-hmm. on the Georgia border. It's hot. <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah, it, it's hot. It's humid. It's, it's hot and humid. So you know, it, it always. One of the things I've always kind of challenged myself with is what to smoke. You know, mm-hmm. when when, um, when it's hot out, we always hear about, yeah, I need that short smoke in the Northeast um, mm-hmm. when it's cold out. Yep. But, you know, I actually could adapt to the cold better than, than the heat. So, you know, when I'm out, for example, having a, a smoke in the summer, there's a couple of things that I do that at least I look for. I do try to go for smaller smokes. So, oh, yeah. You know, I go for maybe, and, and here's why, particularly with wrapper, 
because that wrapper starts to get moist in the humidity very, very quickly. If you're yeah, humidity. indeed. Uh, especially like Maduro. And to me, when Maduro starts you know, moistening up, it just, it, unfortunately, it could make a really good cigar kind of go south. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I won't usually go bigger than a 550 um, mm-hmm. in the morning, um, per se. And, you know, the fun, like, usually when Chattanooga, though, I end up having, like, three smokes out there, too. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, and that's the problem. I mean, there are a few tobacco shops, and I'm sure the listeners can relate to this. You go to, and you're a kid in the candy store, there are way too many choices. I get a little OCD about, you know, what have I smoked, or what haven't I smoked yet, and, okay, how early is it, and what am I having, and did I have this already, could I have it before? And Burns is just that way. It's just, So you've got a great tobacco shop, but then you've also got everybody who's attending the tweet up, which I think has probably grown every year. And you're trading cigars and you're talking about, you know, different sticks. Uh, for me, I generally don't smoke before noon Eastern Standard Time, my time zone, but I do on occasion. And I, I, I like Connecticut Shade and a little espresso, maybe. Or better yet, a little, like a little Cuban coffee, although I'm not a big coffee guy and I have no idea how to make any of these drinks. Um, but something light and that pairs well like that, just again, boom, gets me going. No, I totally agree. And, you know, it, you know, we talked about, you know, in the morning, in the summer, outdoors, I kind of, I, mm-hmm. I actually love it. I, if I could, like a lot of times when I'm working, when I work my day job, I'll do. I'll I'll get up early to have a cigar smoke, um, as because I want to review it as my first of the day, and occasionally, I, you know, when you get into that like, the crack of dawn, yep, and I actually really that's my favorite summertime moment to have a cigar, um, mm-hmm. because that sun hasn't come out yet, the humidity kind of, I don't want to say it's it's less humid, but it, it is somewhat more, less humid. Depending it's more on. bearable. Yeah, it's more bearable because you don't have the the, the heating. Stuff. I I just really in, enjoy and savor that moment per se. Well, I think what you just described there was uh, this past IPCPR down in New Orleans, which is <laughs> humid as all can be when it's humid, and it was it had its big days of uh, ninety degree temperatures, ninety degree humidity, probably just a little cooler than Singapore, and. Um, it's one of the few times where you just end up staying up all night because everybody's having a cigar party or gathering and you're in the streets of New Orleans. Uh, yeah. And absolutely. Um, you know, sunrise, you haven't got quite to bed yet. You're going to get a nap, find the right smoke. And generally for me at that time of day or night, late in the night, it, it's, it's a little Robusto petite Lancero. It's something that hits my palate. That's not going to take too long. Yeah. No, I agree. Where, when you were in New Orleans this year, uh, where were you at nighttime, like in New Orleans? Um, down, well, sort of in and around the French Quarter, but around, but on the what I would call the fringes, kind of on the outer edges. It seemed a lot of um, a lot of different parties that were going on, whether it was manufacturers or just friends who gathered up, were trying to avoid the most touristy of tourist spots. So you kind of go out just a little further on the edge either down by the water or two, if I'm remembering right, east east of the quarter. And, yeah, east of the quarter. And um, just having a great time. You know, keep it real low-key. And at night, it's, it's, it's so much cooler down there at night than it is during the day. Granted, most of the time, you and I were both in the convention center with air conditioning. Um, but it does kind of hit you like a brick wall when you walk outside. And, um, yeah, we're just smoking a lot at night. And, th- and that's the great thing about I will say the industry here in IPCPR, especially everybody's got something new. They might want you to try. So you kind of get, get a little leap on the uh, general consumer and you can try something, keep your opinion to yourself or share it depending on, you know, where you're at. Um, but yeah, New Orleans was definitely a, a great, great spot. I will say I only stayed up almost overnight, like twice. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting up there in age. So my body just <laughs> rebelled. No, I agree. I I actually ended up at Hemingway's. Um, oh yeah, a couple of nights, and that was so filled that place. It spilled out into the street. Oh yeah, I was a guy. Um, yeah, but it yeah. was night. I actually had a really good time. I was somehow there was some chairs out there, and but most of us were standing. And 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 you were definitely right in in New Orleans. It was um, it it, it was definitely a more bearable moment. Um, 
The worst, the worst was coming at it at Air Condition Convention Center, and wa- I, my hotel was two blocks away, uh, and, um, and it was a short walk. I know some people had the long horizontal walk, which was like a yeah. mile, but that short two block walk, I went from the nice air conditioning, and I just basically, oh had yeah, a shower by the time yeah. I got to my room. No, absolutely, yeah. We were we were we were staying right across the street, and but it was still, you know, it, well. And the other one was the layout, not not to bore the listeners, but. If you if you're familiar with the convention center, imagine a rectangle, and you're going to enter in on the far corner of the rectangle. But to enter the building, you got to be on the outside at the other end of that rectangle. So you're kind of making a big loop around or a big U-turn. So you were walking out quite a bit, and you know, and then of course walking to get outside, and all of a sudden it hits you. But it was great, and and I will say the best thing about the trade show. I know a lot of guys listening and gals. You can't go because you're not really in the industry or maybe you don't own a tobacco shop. You walk in there on day two, especially for me, it smells wonderful. Yeah. I mean, there's so much great tobacco going on. They kind of push the vape and the other folks off in the corner, the non-tobacco thing, but they're still there. But it just smells great because everybody's had a great you know, cigar going from the day before and just the sheer numbers of people. It's, it's an awesome. It's an awesome time. Yeah. Yeah, and we've talked about the humidity, and obviously the other problem you have is now we're going back to Vegas, so we're going to the opposite extreme this yeah. year, where yeah. basically make sure you have travel with those travel bobitas, uh, is what I'll, you know, I'll say. Oh, big time. Have your travel bobitas. Now, I'll tell folks, consumers can't go to IPCPR, okay? Right. But what I'll tell folks is, if you want to be around the cigar industry, not a bad week to go to Vegas because you can easily go to Vegas, not go to the trade show, mm-hmm. which, believe it or not, you probably not miss it. And the industry people all converged in one area around the Venetian, the Palazzo. Generally, yeah. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be, if you want to hang with the industry, you're going to get your opportunity in, uh, yeah. in a really good setting. But, yeah, you know. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Vegas was a real challenge. Um I mean, smoking outside in Vegas, I just didn't find oh. it an option at all. No, well, it, I mean, there are a few uh, cigar bars, rum bar, and a few other places there where you can smoke outside. And they have misters and things going. But the basic physics involved, uh, the elevation, but again, that dry heat, you light a cigar, and it's lighting like, it's like Mission Impossible with the fuse, where you light the tip, and all of a sudden it's just burning like a fuse. Uh, you're going to light off a skyrocket. Your cigar, you might puff on it a third as much, and it's already gone. And you didn't do anything wrong. It's just so dry, things just go up. Um, but luckily, you know, it is a cigar-friendly town, maybe a little friendly in New Orleans now. Um, but yeah, your point's right. You'll, you'll see cigar makers, the cigar industries, reps, at the bars, the restaurants, the lounges. Um, it, it, it is a great time to kind of get out there. And I, I think it's the third week of July. July, right? Third week, 20, maybe. The, yeah, it's kind of the third full week. It's the twenty fourth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and the hotel rates are usually pretty reasonable too. So, because I've had, yeah. we actually, there are some guys who from my cigar uh, place I smoke at. They go every year. They go to Vegas, be, and they basically they gamble during the. They do all their gambling during the day, and then they kind of hobnob at night. Um, and they've they've really enjoyed it. Um. You know, it's going to be interesting with FDA if, if that whole camaraderie will continue or not. I, I don't know, you know, how cigars, what the legalities are of passing out cigars to your friends. You know, that's yeah. kind of a very interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't see somehow an FDA person at the rum bar basically blasting a manufacturer for handing a cigar out. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's just one friend giving another friend a cigar. Um, you know, it's, you know, should that go through, you know, it's, it's the formal events and things, but, you know, I just, as I said, I hope, as I said before, I hope cooler heads prevail and all, but yeah, it's, it is an interesting time to go to Vegas, uh, during that week. Cause you, you can meet everybody if you're a fan, you know, just don't, don't be the crazy fan who just comes up out of the blue and with a bazillion questions and blah, 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 but right. you know, they're, they're right. all there. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, that that's what I would agree. It's it's, but it is a, like I said, and it's a. They tend to be a little looser in terms of like. Oh yeah. In terms of cigars at some of these hotels too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Definitely a good time. I, I may be there, but I'm not going to have a booth this year, which is not uncommon. I don't have a booth every year. Um, I, yeah, I just I may go there and walk the floor, 
and and you kind of network, put in your time, as you said, you socialize and you know just you know re- renew relationships. But it's always been a nice show for me. Um, but I'm not going to have a booth this year. But I'll probably just kind of if I you know, still up in the air because. I've got my 30-year high school reunion, going to go to that, and then turn around maybe and catch a plane out there. And i um, always having a good time in Vegas. And, and well, and I get to see you. and to, Well, you get to see everybody that you yeah. see on other social media face-to-face, which sometimes you, 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 may, you know, you see them one, like uh, you, you see them once, twice a year in person maybe, but you see them all the time online. No, absolutely. So, um this, actually, what we'll do is we'll wrap up our debonair ideal segment. Um, I think we're at a good point. What we'll do is we'll, we'll run uh, a, some quick commercials. And then, Tom, it's a good segue. We'll kind of get into catching up with you in general, what's going on at CCS. Sure. sure. All right. So uh, we will be right back. The legend has been reborn, introducing the new Hoyo de Monterey. At Hoyo, they're about craft. From sea to soil to sunshine and rain, they obsess over their labors. With skillful hands and passionate souls, they create. They do not settle. They do not concede. They are Hoyo de Monterey, and this is their craft. Experience the uniquely handcrafted Hoyo de Monterey at HoyoCigars.com. The highly sought after Punch Rare Corojo is back for 2016. Rare Corojo is made with a dark Sumatra wrapper and fillers from Honduras, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic, giving you a powerful yet rich smoke. These highly coveted and revered cigars are only made in small quantities once a year, so get them while you can. This is a punch classic that you can't pass up. CAO has brought you iconic cigars over the years. Brasilia, Italia, La Traviata, done in a playful nature with a unique twist. Travel to the exciting world of CAO and back in just under an hour with any of the groundbreaking CAO World Blends. Test the boundaries of style with new age brands in the 95 rated Flathead. Honor the past with new classics like Pilon. Treat your palate to an array of flavors with Soul Fire and Moon Trance. At CAO, the experiences are limitless. So what's your next move? Will Cooper, episode 189 of Stogie Geeks here. Uh, I'm joined by Tom Pearson of Commonwealth Cedar Spills, who is uh, my co-host for the uh, evening tonight. Tom, again, thanks for joining. Hey, well, thanks uh, to Paul, or I should say Paul's other, for uh, having a baby. Is that right? Is that what's going on? Well, we, we, we think baby Acidorian may be coming tonight. Very so, cool. Yeah, so um, we're, you know, Paul obviously got the call um, late this afternoon because I, I spoke to Paul and we were planning that we were doing show planning around lunch. Nice. Um, so uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and uh, Absolutely. We'll so it's a we'll have a new member of the Stogie Geeks team uh, maybe very soon. Yeah, you're gonna have to get it's not a T-shirt, but one of those little baby jumper things or whatever with Stogie Geeks on them and yeah, <laughs> definitely the baby jumper, whatever they're called. I don't have kids, but you know, I'm, something like that. Right, right. Yeah, mine are older, so and I, I started cigars after um, I was older. Yeah, and I don't think you and I get asked to a lot of baby showers, so I, I have no idea what the appropriate gift is. No, but, but I mean, we can we can send them cigars. Yeah. Now, now the interesting thing is, I do have a daughter that just got married, and um, so I went to wedding cigars. Um, yeah. But you know, obviously, everyone's asking about grandkids. They've always asked. And I'm on the record. Yeah. Whenever they come, I'm thrilled. So if exactly. I'm young enough to enjoy it, I can't wait. And um, my only fear is I hope I can get someone to make me a cigar now at FDA. <laughs> <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually yeah. been debating if I can get something done now. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so Tom, obviously, uh, you know, we've known each other a long time. And I want to say Commonwealth Cedar Spills, are you in business now? Is this your fifth year? Yep, yep. Just going into the fifth year. Yep, yep that's what I thought. So... Uh, We've had you on before, but maybe for folks who aren't familiar with Commonwealth Cedar Spills, maybe you can give us the, the, um, the, you know, the, yeah. Yeah, the, the skinny. Yeah, well, I, absolutely. Um, so my name's Tom Person. We're located here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I'm the uh, president, founder, and I, I can't say inventor, but I do own the patent on Cedar Spills, which are a traditional way to light a cigar. Uh, I'll hold up here on the camera um, for folks who are tuning in and watching. It's just a thin strip of wood that we use to light a pipe or better yet a cigar and it was the traditional way 
of doing that before we invented matches and even before we invented lighters um, that kind of came out from the European, Spanish, to a higher degree, uh, shipping and trade that took place uh, two centuries ago, two, two, three centuries ago, between Europe and the Caribbean and, and so on, where cigars were you know, manufactured Cuba, the Caribbean, and the area down there. And they had a lot of Spanish cedar, which is actually mahogany for folks that don't know or aren't woodworkers. But Spanish cedar is actually mahogany. And they would use them not only for boxes, uh, but to wrap cigars in with the shavings because Spanish cedar has a nice fragrance to it, very little oil, and it actually kind of repels bugs and repels water just a little bit. It's not waterproof by any means. Um, so in starting to use them around cigars in that manner for packaging and then shipping, um, somebody got it in their head to like, hey, let's light up that wood and try to light a cigar with it. And the word, I think, and again, I, I looked into it a lot, and the best thing I can come up with is in Europe, you would have a split of wood when down either from a tree in a shave or a log, and somewhere between all the Spanish interaction out of Europe and down to the Caribbean, back and forth, split of wood became spill of wood, and cedar, which is a lot of us know here in North America is red cedar, the stuff we throw in gerbil cages and make outdoor furniture. Someone said, hey, why don't we take that hard wood, that cedar, and we'll use it, and it just became Spanish cedar, even though it was actually mahogany. But yeah, so uh, five years, um, we're now on five continents as well in various tobacco shops around the country, or they can go to uh, shop.cedarspills.com and order spills uh, like this one. Uh, this is our classic cedar spill. It's about not quite a foot long. You light it, and as it slowly burns, you light your cigar, you roll it in your fingers, you puff on it. And I think with a softer flame, you taste more of the cigar sooner. Uh, you're not put carbon in the uh, filter, or excuse me, in the foot, pardon me. And then we uh, introduced about two years ago, after talking to some folks, they wanted bigger quantity, um, so we've got the shorter bunch spill, and I'm holding up now for you. Uh, this is a bunch of those. This is about 300 of them. We sell these by the thousand. So I'll get somebody from a golf course, a restaurant, an organization. They're having an event, or they just want them. We uh, imagine this bundle about three times as large, and we sell them a thousand at a time. Um, but the nice thing that sets us out is uh, you can see here. This is one we did for Ted's. Cigar company. Uh, we put logos on them in foreign languages and names and all sorts of things, and we sell them by the box or the bundle. So, hope that was brief enough, Coop. That's what oh. that's what we're all about. Oh, that's great. Now, one thing is you have a very on the on the classic one. You have a pretty unique design of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's not just a strip of wood. What went into a little bit of that design? Um, I, I call it a lot of burn time. You know, my original epiphany was uh, about five six years ago. I had some surgery. And somebody had just given me a cigar, because I hadn't really been smoking cigars till about six or seven years ago. And they gave me a Padron 64, and I had some surgery, and I couldn't smoke it, so I was sitting on it. And um, again, living here in Louisville, Kentucky, we tend to go to the Kentucky Derby every couple of years. And I was really looking forward to having that cigar. And I had the cigar, I was at the Derby, and I was about to light it, and I used a blowtorch. You know, uh, probably uh, not, uh, not a quad, a dual torch. And I lit the cigar. Um, and it was all right, but I, I was like, all right, let me try something else. I took a piece of cedar that I kept with me. I broke off from the insert that come in some cigar boxes and I said, I'm going to light it this way instead. It took me a little while with that blowtorch to light the uh, cedar strip that I'd broken from the cigar box, held it up to the cigar and lit the cigar really nice. It was a softer flame. I thought it, you know, just it wrapped around the foot better. It just wasn't so hot and so intense. And I was like, this is cool. And I shook that piece of cedar to kind of blow it and put it out. And all that black char and soot from that piece of cedar fell onto me. And that was my epiphany. There's got to be a better way. So we started cutting down uh, sheets of Spanish cedar. And now we have this nice little design here where I've got a circle on the end with a fire icon. We engrave it on there. And then we've got this long 10-inch strip and a little handle here where, as you can see on this one, there's a... Uh, one of our favorite customers, he's got this kind of devil head on it. It's his thing, whatever. And then his text on it. 
it gives you plenty of time to light your cigar, no matter the ring gauge or the size, and get a nice even burn and start it. And I just think you do taste more of the cigar sooner using a softer flame. I mean, I use a blowtorch when I'm in my car running errands or on a windy day somewhere. But, you know, other than that, I think a spill is a better way. It's a softer flame. I don't put as much carbon and charcoal into the binder and the filler. And my, I don't get the drastic flavor change. I get the evolution of a flavor from the foot to the finish. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree, especially in that early stage. I know you and I have talked about that where, uh -huh. um, you know, sometimes when I put the torch to it, there's a muddling of the flavor. There's like a muddle, yeah. and it's kind of that sell down. And, and I get that's how most people will probably, you know, if they're on the go, smoke a cigar like that. But if you're kind of looking, what I would say for the, again, going from an artesian standpoint of smoking yeah. that cigar. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you want to really, like a lot of times we'll say, savor and enjoy a cigar. And a good example is, I just spoke this Davidoff, uh, scorecard which was meant for the golf which was meant for golf and sure it's a cigar you don't want to smoke on the golf course okay <laughs> yeah. you want to smoke it after you're done with golf relaxing exactly. and Savor. chilling out is what you do. Yeah. so um so you, you have this idea what made you think you can kind of turn this into a now business which you you've done very well with yeah yeah well yeah um you know it, it's been five years it's been going well you know it, it grows a little bit every year and I'm lucky in one sense for the first three years, I had no competition at all. I mean, all I'm competing with are guys that do take the time, as you said, in the artisan, the traditional method, um, uh, with the ritual of breaking off the strips of sheath that come in some cigar boxes. I, you know, I didn't have any competition, so it's kind of easy there. I just had to get the word out, send away a lot of free samples, go to events, go to shops and get it there. Um, do have another guy, a competitor, nice guy, makes a, his own sword shape uh, spill. Love it. More people using spills, the better. I think the idea came from, I've got to give it a shot. And I think that's the entrepreneur spirit here in the United States. Um, why not? Why not me? I can do this. I'm a woodworker. I'm familiar enough with it. And the thing that I think the thing that really got me after the epiphany moment at, at Churchill Downs with that Padron 64, that there might be something to it. I made it. I made a, a, a test design, nothing fancy. And then I went to one of the IPCPRs in Vegas with a prototype and I walked around the show floor to see if anyone else was doing it. And I went up to, I think Rocky Patel and showed him the sample and he looked at it and he knew what a spill was. He was like, Oh, well, and he kind of looked at it. He's like, and, he, and just, you know, 30 seconds of that, he's like, yeah, there might be something to it. There, it it's, it's a tradition. And, and, and to be honest, I can't buy them anywhere because no one makes them. Right. Um, and then I also called uh, David Savona out of the blue at Cigar Aficionado. I think he's now the uh, editor-in-chief. Yep. And I called him out of the blue and said, I saw your video online where you guys were using spills. I think it was he and Gordon Mott at the time. Where did you, where'd you get yours? Where do you buy them? And I think he said something to the effect of, what do you mean buy them? No, no, one, no one's crazy enough to I make them. It just, it's just you kind of break it off or... The traditional way, like I've seen in Cuba and uh, the DR, they'll take a piece of mahogany, the cedar wood, and they'll just cut the strip with a knife. Um, and I was like, oh, well, I'm thinking of doing this. And I talked to him. Again, gracious, gave me two, three minutes of my time. Uh, and I, he goes, you know, if you're going to personalize them, engrave them, you know, names, foreign languages, company logos, whatever, you might have something going on. And I worked for software, I, uh, too. Uh, I worked for Macromedia, the greatest software company to ever be. And then Adobe, uh, second greatest, maybe. Great companies, great folks. And left there and said, you know, I've got some money. Why not? And just gave it a shot. And I've been, I've been really lucky I, meeting people such as yourself, other people that are kind of in the press and in the news, and then the cigar makers themselves. You know, the big guys are a little more standoffish, and I think it's by the nature of they probably get approached by everybody for everything. Um, but really, from the smallest guy who's just starting to the boutiques, to the guys making tens of thousands, 100,000 sticks, everybody's been really inviting. And I think it was at IPCPR three or four years ago in Orlando. Someone told me, if you're here another year, that will mean more than anything else. Because a lot of guys come and go and try things out. You're different. It's a little unique. If you can make it a year, there might be something going on. So 
luckily enough, uh, we've been doing well. So, you know, we have cedarspills.com, our education and marketing site. If you want to buy a box or a bundle, um, shop.cedarspills.com, you can go there and order order some. And, and we ship them across the country. Uh, you can also buy them in tobacconist shops. We've got various tobacconist shops around the United States. We just shipped one today to a guy outside London, um, and that's the fun part is you never know how guys hear about you. It could be a guy listening to this podcast right now is going to go like, oh, all right, I'll try some out, or he'll go into your uh, tobacco shop and buy, buy his own spill box. So it, it's just been a lot of fun, and I got to smoke a lot of nice cigars. So. Oh, no, I bet. I bet. Now, you know, I remember when you, you came out with the product, and, and I, I, I was very impressed with the product because I was one of the guys who would take the, you know, a cedar insert from a cigar box. Mm-hmm. Cut it. Yeah. And I, I'd light a cedar spill and I'd, I'd basically burn my shirt or something, you know. But yeah. yeah the, the, the design of that is just such that, you know, yeah, you, it's still a burning piece of wood. You want to be careful. But it, it really, like you said, the way it tapers, it, it's easy yeah. to light with that circle up at the front. And it has a nice tapering effect as well. And, 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 it's, and it's funny, to your point, the circle we put on the end with the little fire icon, when I first came out, we didn't have the little fire thing on here. That's after right. I That's right. after I I gave them out to a couple people, they would hold it like instead of by the handle up here that's a little squ- rounded square, right. they would hold it in the middle of the stick and then they would light it arbitrarily, not at the point at the end on either end. They would just kind of light it right in front of there, and I'm like looking at them like, "What are you doing? Like I know it's a relatively new concept, but you've played with fire before. I presume maybe you'd have." Or maybe have not, um, but yeah, we had to put the fire icon down there for a little liability cushion to say, okay, you see the fire symbol, put the fire here, right. and it burns up. And it is really the taper that helps so much on this classic spill because it, it burns slower. You can tilt it down a little bit, uh, giving it more wood to actually the fire to grab onto and burn, or you can tilt it up, level it off, and just roll the cigar and really just puff away and get a big flame going. Um, and it does help because I, I still do it on occasion. I always have spills with me, but I'll, I'll, I'm in a shop or I'm at an event, I'll get an insert or some guys at the counter have broken it up and kind of, and they don't, they don't take scissors and cut them nicely into strips. The guys just kind of sit there and break it with their hands. So it's all splintered and I'll burn that and I'll burn mine. And you watch the uneven burn. And as you said, you might even get some popping, depending on the you know, knots in the wood or just the way that the tear is on that piece of cedar. And it's just fun to watch because it's a different experience. And, and, it, and fire's kind of neat in a way, but you don't want it to get out of control. And I think ours, the taper, the design, and we actually, from the uh, lumber mills where we get our veneers, uh, we have a specific thickness that we've protected, that we have patented, um, that I think burns better than anything thinner or much thicker. We could we could make this two, three, four times as thick. It just wouldn't give you the great experience. And when you light this, it goes to ash and ember. It just kind of goes away. Right. As opposed to charcoal and bits of darkness that'll fall on you or your food or your napkin or you know wherever it is you might be smoking. Yeah, and you want some flame, obviously, when you're putting that to the cigar. So yeah. It makes more sense as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And- you know, Tom, uh, you're a man of many talents, uh, you know, and, and I love the woodworking. And one project you did, I'm going to hold this one up because I, I have this hanging very proudly, is the placards. Um, yes. That you've done for, this is a Cigar Coop one that Tom uh, was very kind. It's hanging up in the Cigar Coop cave. I took it down before the show. Um, are you still doing the placards? I know you were doing them for yeah. some uh, manufacturers. Yeah, we we are. Uh, we got it. We we're, so those are the cigar maker placards. Now that one, you're obviously not a cigar maker yet. Maybe you'll get into it. But as part of a promotional effort to all the members of the press that we could think of that were worthwhile. So right there, you know, we threw out a couple guys and gals. Were like, no, they're not getting them. I but somehow promote, got them. But... Yeah, but to promote, no, you you were gonna get. You might have gotten two uh, if if we hadn't checked the list twice. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we make these placards like that one with a cigar maker's logo or brand. Um, and we raise money for Cigars for Warriors. Um, they sell pretty well. I mean, it's kind of when you know a cigar maker is coming through your town, um, you know, whether it's Jonathan Drew or Eddie Tarazona, uh, Fred Rui at Nomad, Enrique at 1502, whoever, um, you can go to shop.cedarspills.com. You can buy a placard. 
It's thirty dollars, and we'll ship it to you and take it to the event, and they will autograph the heck out of it. And then a portion of those uh, dollars, and I think it's a third, go to Cigars for Warriors, who is our official charity uh, here at Commonwealth Cedar Spills. And you know, Cigars for Warriors is a great charity. I donate spills. Guys donate cigars. Um, Bovada donates uh, humidification packs, um, cutters, lighters, and then they break all these down into those little white UPS if it fits the ship boxes and send the care packages to our troops deployed overseas. Um, so the placards have been great. Um, as I said, yeah, I never know when they're going to sell, but that's fine because they're all handcrafted. I don't sit down here with a stack of Drew Estates and I've got some over here for another, you know, room 101. As soon as an order comes in, we put it in the production line. When we're not making spills of any shape or size, we can drop the placards in and get those rolling out as well. So it's been fun. And, and if I might, this is the other thing we started making uh, oh, to benefit yeah. Cigars for Warriors. Um, I'm holding up for the folks just listening here. We make Cigar Maker cufflinks. Now, I know not everybody wears cufflinks or into them, but if you're looking for the gift, like uh, Father's Day is uh, coming up June 19th, and if uh, and if you bought him the smoke, you can buy him a pair of cufflinks and make him bespoke. It's kind of a rhyme there. Maybe it didn't work, but yeah, we we make these cigar maker cufflinks. Uh, I was kind of put it on the camera. This is Jim Robinson from Leaf and Bean at the Strip. I love his Leaf brand with uh, Oscar Val um, Valadares. There you go. I can I can never say his last name, um, but he's a cigar maker as well as a shop owner. And then like here's another example here. Uh, my man, oh, sorry, there we go. Uh, Eddie Terrazona at Terrazona Cigars. I'm a big fan of his uh, XTC. Uh, he also has the uh, 305, Gorilla 305. Um, but again, uh, custom cufflinks. And again, this was one of those ideas where I, I like cufflinks. I don't wear them all the time. But, you know, when you dress up and take the wife out for an evening out or somewhere and you want to look a little different and you really want to express the love for a brand or, or whatever, a cufflink boom um and it was just a total lark we started making them and somebody said hey you're doing you're you're doing other things can we do this as a fundraiser for cigars for warriors and yeah and it's real funny that our best selling to date and we've only been at this for some uh few months skip martin at roma craft tobacco i've never seen the guy wear a dress shirt ever this, he bought cufflinks no no but good guess no he didn't because, again, I don't think I've ever seen him wear a dress shirt. I've seen yeah. him wear polos and T-shirts right. and sweaters, but never a dress shirt, let alone a French cuff dress shirt. Yeah. <laughs> but our best-selling cuff link has been the Roma Craft. You know, his um, – the symbol, it's – I don't know how to describe it, like an X. The Roma the, – yeah, the Roma – the logo, yep. Yeah, it, it, it's like – it's six or – yeah, it's like six lines crossing. and a little, But I'm simplifying it. But, yeah, his, uh, his cuff links – for the guy who would never wear them. And he was like, didn't give it a second thought. He's like, oh, it's helping out Cigars for Warriors. Go for it. Let's do it. I think we sold in the first two months 18 sets of Roma Craft Cufflinks, all to people in Texas, which I think is phenomenally funny because that's where Skip spends half his life right. and then the other half down in the cigar factory. Um, but yeah, I just started approaching a, a bunch of different um, cigar makers. Um, uh, Bill Paley, La Polina jumped in, no problem at all. He loved it. Uh, Fred Rui, uh, Nomad, uh, 1502. I'm trying to remember everybody we sell. Uh, if you go to shop.cedarspills.com, we've got them all there. Did Clint and, do one? I'm, say again? Clint Aaron do one? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Clint Aaron did. Yeah, because that logo, I'm just thinking, would really look good on yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Clint Aaron uh, jumped on there. Um, so, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun, which is which is neat because I'm, I'm working with wood all the time anyway, making these cedar spills and we make them uh, again. And the ones I was showing here, I'll show them once again, that's the same wood. That's mahogany. The same wood I'm using that I use for my cedar spills. Uh, we can make for cufflinks. We make them primarily round, but we do make some square ones as well. Um, we also make them in Oak, bamboo, a red maple, a teak, any kind of wood type. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, so much so that I think, I don't want to break any news here, but I think I might open up uh, another little thing, business for wooden cufflinks, because I looked around and I don't see a lot of wooden cufflinks, and I own metal ones and silk, yeah. 
yeah. uh, enamel and I don't know if porcelain's the right word, but a lot of different ones, but none none made in wood. Oh, that's great. Now, if um, you said that cigar manufacturers, could folks get their own logo put on there as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if you go to shop.cedarspills.com and click on cufflinks, you can go in there and you can drop your own design on there. Um, we do check it out. You know, if you want, if you want the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Miami Dolphins logo, we can't do that unless we wanted to go through some licensing. But if you've got your family crest, uh, the company name, we do a lot of company names. It's been fun that way. Um, any designer logo that, you know, you've used for your baseball team, your softball team, uh, whatever it might be. Yeah, we can pop it on there. Um, so you can really customize it. I, we've also done a number of uh, cufflinks for Freemasons. I'm not a Freemason myself, but I have a lot of uh, uh, friends, brothers, if you will, who are cigar smokers who are Freemasons. And um, we've made a number of the, uh, number for them, um, which has been awesome. Uh, trying to think of the weirdest design we've had lately. I think we did a pair of handcuffs. Really small, of course, because, you know, cufflinks aren't very big. Um, we've done a couple of different individual cigars artistically, which I thought was kind of neat as well. And then, I guess, monograms. The letters, you know, for your, your initials. Like, you might have a monogram towel or a shirt or a handkerchief. Um, seem to be real popular. But I, I like wood. It, it just has a certain richness, a certain texture to it. Um, that metal and, you know, enamel... Uh, Others don't. So it, it's been a lot of fun. And again, if we can raise some money for Cigars for Warriors with the Cigar Maker ones, all the better. Yeah, and, and you know, for folks, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you, what you donate a portion of Cigars for Warriors, that goes for postage, right? Which is a right. That's right. a Thank big you. expense yes. that these guys have. That, that's really the only expense they have. Um, since everybody's donating things and it's a volunteer organization, you know, they're down there in, in Florida and they gather up all the stuff. And as soon as they get a good stockpile, like, you know, I'll, I'll give all props and credit to Jonathan Drew of Drew Estates. I have seen pictures and you can, and if you want more information on it, you can go to the Cigars for Warriors website or their Facebook page. But I know Jonathan Drew and the team there, they've dropped cigars like pat, like a pallet. No, and I mean a pallet in that five foot square sense of the word, four foot square sense of the word of cigars that they've had um, that are great cigars across all their brands. Um, I've seen other cigar makers and folks drop things down there, but Jonathan's been an outstanding supporter of cigars for warriors and uh, putting, you know, putting his time and his effort and his stock and inventory uh, behind his support for such a great charity. But yeah, because postage is the only thing they have to pay for. Everybody yep. volunteers. Everybody donates. Yep. So anything we can do to help between selling placards or selling the cufflinks, uh, is, 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 we're happy to do it. Why not? We're working all day anyway. Let's get it done. Now, the good news is that you don't have any FDA regulations to deal with. Um, no, I don't. It's just like you, like we've all been saying, it, 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 it could impact you know, the overall cigar market. And, you know, I'm I think I'm lucky if I'm maybe one quarter of 1% of how guys and gals in the world light their cigars, but um, using a cedar spill. So you never know what's going to happen. As I said, though, I think cooler heads will prevail and will compromise, and, and the FDA regulation will resolve itself amicably. Um, but but who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Now, yeah, I'll just, you know, one thing on the Cigar for Warriors, what I'll say, there's been some... I've heard mixed information. Basically, manufacturers are still going to be allowed to give cigars to them or not. Some people are saying no, but some people are saying it's giving a donating a cigar to charity is different than donating a sample for marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's yeah, yeah. It's 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 up in the air. I mean, everything. It's a gray area. It's a gray area for sure. Yeah, yeah, and everything the FDA has put forward. You know the. Regulation and legislation and ultimately laws are only really tested when you either get arrested for X or you have a court case to resolve X. So we don't know. The FDA's put forth a lot of things using guesstimates, forecasting, 
and all sorts of things regarding numbers and policies and things. And I would really hope they did some consulting with people in the cigar industry, but I just, I shake my head and doubt it after I read, I read part of that and I got a headache and I like that kind of stuff. I was a poli sci major and for my undergrad degree and I don't mind reading legislation and regulation, but I know bureaucrats and the way they seem to be going. And I think there is a difference between donations and giveaways, but we'll wait and see. We'll see what happens and we'll find out. Exactly. Tom, uh, yeah, thanks for getting us up to date on uh, what's happening at Commonwealth Cedar Spills. We'll Absolutely, do, thanks. Take a quick break, um, and then Tom and I will talk about some of the cigars we've been smoking um, over the. Oh yeah. <laughs> 